races, 65 points remain in the championship fight. From now on, there can be no errors. It must be perfect. Every race, every turn, every lap. The powerful Houston victory by Jill DeFerrin earned him back-to-back -back wins for the first time in his career. The 33-year-old brings the point lead here to Laguna Seca, where he finished second a year ago. But perhaps more important than that, in his rookie year, 1995, he scored his first champ car victory here. This track suits Jill DeFerrin in his pursuit of a championship. He loves perfection. For Kenny Breck, most of his success this year has come on the ovals with four wins. But on the street and road courses, it's been an entirely different story with only one top five finish. Breck is now 11 points behind DeFerrin in the battle for the championship. And since Kenny Breck today is struggling again, starting 14th, there's the distinct possibility that he could lose further ground in the chase for the $1 million postseason prize. Elio Castroneves has been a dominant force on the street and road courses this year with three victories. He came into Laguna Seca third in the championship, 30 points behind his teammate Jill DeFerrin. He's the current track record holder here at Laguna and was disappointed not to get that precious point for pole position yesterday. Today, he's determined to get the point for most laps led and the 20 points for leading the race. He's got to find comfort in knowing that 15 of the 18 past winners here at Laguna have started on the front row. Castro Neves may be the defending champion, but the man they call the king of Laguna Seca, of course, is Brian Herter, with two victories here and three consecutive pole positions. But yesterday, he qualified in fifth spot, but because of a technical infraction, they have now taken Brian Herter and put him at the back of the pack. Here is what happened. There was a small bolt on the car that was one quarter turn loose. That made a technical infraction with the height of the side pod. They tighten that one quarter turn and he passed, but Cart would not let him slide. They put him to the back of the pack. The breaking news part of this story is that the president of Forsyth Racing, Ron Dixon, has now said we may protest the whole field at the conclusion of this event. We want every car held to the same standard that we were yesterday. Will that affect the outcome of today's race? Well, we'll have to wait and find out. going on in Monterey, California as the Kart FedEx Championship Series is ready to race again the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey. Now we'll take a look at how they qualified, adding in the Scott Dixon penalty with Jill DeFerrin on the pole and Elio Castroneves rounds out an all Penske front row. As you look down through the field, you might want to pay a special attention to Michael Andretti and Dario Franchitti, who were both on the edge of the championship fight, but their qualifying did not help them at all. Brian Herta, as you see, with no time, moved to the back of the field. 2.238 miles, 83 laps, 24 shifts a lap. Top speed, 185 miles an hour. Fuel range, 29 to 33 laps. They should make it two stops. The fuel window could open as early as lap 17. And the circuit here. Very, very unusual. Lots of elevation changes. Look at the numbers. Total 426 feet of total elevation change. Principal passing area, we'll see it at the start in any subsequent restarts from 185 miles an hour down to 60 miles an hour in turn one. We've also seen passing attempts into turn five, also turn six. But remember the pass, Sonardi pass heard it. Well, that's at the top of the court shoot. Perhaps one of the most exhilarating corners to drive, certainly one of the most photographed as they plunge 14 stories all the way down the hill to the last passing opportunity into the slowest corner, turn number 11. In that championship fight, as we watch Jill DeFerrin and Elio Castro Nevis on course, consider Breck and DeFerrin. With two road courses, one oval left to go, it is a total uphill battle for Kenny Breck. Sweeping down through the signature of this track, the corkscrew turn down, down the hill, then swinging back to the left. They'll come into file, and we'll be ready for the start. Championship battle, DeFerrin at the front, Kenny Breck in 14th. Paul mentioned Michael Andretti in 16th, Dario Franchitti back in 22nd, and the king of Laguna, Brian Herta, dead last. 
The second turn, the first turn here is just a light bend. The second turn is a hairpin. And it has collected many a car in its history. You've got to be careful on the start. Deal on the pit straight. Green flag is out. Here we go, heading for the first turn. There's the bend. Now the hairpin just ahead. And on on the far outside, trying to make a move around, and it's Michael Andretti. Michael Andretti comes off the outside of the corner. We also saw a puff of contact smoke in the middle of the field. No. Michael reports back the car is not running. Joel DeFerrin already with a nice interval back to Castro Neves. He will try to set the pace. As we've seen in previous races, particularly at Houston, DeFerrin set a pace that no one else could match. Slowly pulled out a larger and larger interval. Looking back for Kenny Breck. Look at him. He's way in the back and not at speed. That, the oh, he's it done. That wheel ends the race. We're going to go back and look at the start, and this will show you a little bit about Michael, and we're going to search for what may in the back of the field had happened with Kenny Breck as well. There's Kenny Breck and Michael Andretti. Looks like there was contact on the way in. But that doesn't explain the left front, does no, it? No, it doesn't. It explains Michael off, but I would expect as they got around turn one, there may have been contact as they got around to the apex. Gary Gerald. Michael Andretti on the radio said he couldn't believe it. The rear locked up big time. Don't know if he reported contact or not, but he said the rears did lock up. Well, he got, he got, looked like he got in contact, but he's gotten restarted, and he pulled out just in front of the leader, Jill DeFerrin, so he's not yet a, a lap down, though he might be very quickly here. Jan. Kenny Breck has just shut the engine down. The crew is assessing whether they can fix this car. Remember, when you're in a championship battle, the only thing that matters is trying to bring it home. Can you get to 12th place? Kenny Breck stays in the car. They're assessing the damage. I'm assuming, Jan, if you can at all, you're going to repair that because you've got to hope for some attrition, and it's only on the first lap. I would agree. Well, already they go to work uh, on the suspension member. He's going to pull that left front corner off. All right, here's what happened. Coming into turn five, Kenny Breck on the left of your screen, Mauricio Guzlin. Bang. Left front, right front contact, substantial damage to the upper wishbone of Kenny Breck's car. Uh, check this out. Both players' cars are off on the same corner together. Remember, they were running right together on the track, actually running ninth and 10th. Tagliani, who is there, and Carpentier, who's got, uh, well, they both have really some serious problems. Patrick Carpentier's nose to head into the barrier. Tagliani is sitting silent on the edge of the racetrack hoping that they'll get him going, but green flag full course, only local yellows covering this incident. The interval between DeFerrin and Castro Nevis remains about the same, but now, now they go full course caution. Pace car will come out, field will slow, and bunch up. We'll go back and look now to see what happened to the players' team. They were running together ninth and 10th. Coming down the hill, turn number 10. Watch the cars here. As he turned in, you could see Carpentier got into the back of him. Alex just a little wide on the turn in. Carpentier dives towards the opening on the inside. The opening quickly disappeared. Contact and both players' cars off. Not a good day for Jerry Forsyth. His only hope now, Brian Herta has already worked his way up to 22nd spot because of the attrition and one pass on the track. Now, the nose is off Michael's car. They're going to try and get that repaired. There's the nose waiting for them to come in. Brian Herta also comes in. Jan? Yeah, you were talking about Brian, and of course they have to gamble on the pit strategy. This won't take long, just taking on some fuel. 4.4 seconds on my watch. Again, this is a gamble in case the yellows play and pay in your favor later. You might as well go with a different strategy when you're starting as far back as Brian Herta is starting position last because of the DQ of his time from qualifying. So under full course caution, there are your top five. A very interesting first three laps. 
we've said this needs to be a day of perfection. It hasn't been thus far. Will we win? Hopefully. Definitely. We have got to cut cost, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com, save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com, we save 10% on online express shipping. That's no, that is wonderful. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. Makes all the difference. Bingo. That's good. Right on the nose. You have one new message. John, it's Bob. I tried tracking you down everywhere, so I'm leaving this on your cell phone. Look, about your merger meeting this morning, whatever you do, avoid the boardroom. I was talking to maintenance, and they just lacquered the table, and it needs 24 hours to dry. Man, I hope you get this. With ordinary cell phones, you leave messages. But with Nextel Direct Connect, the digital two-way radio, you get right through. Introducing new Castrol AccuVision rain repellent. Unlike Rain-X, AccuVision can go on in just one minute, so you can easily apply it whenever it's convenient. New Castrol AccuVision, the one-minute rain repellent. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call now, 800-553-4400. That's 800-553-4400 for the Wall Street Journal. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey is brought to you by Honda, proud sponsor of the 2001 FedEx Championship Series. By FedEx, proud sponsor of the FedEx Championship Series. And by Nextel. How business gets done. Back at the Monza Raceway at Laguna Seca, Paul Page, Parker Johnstone, Gary Gerald Yonbikas in the pits. Here's the current line of standings for you. We are under full course caution because of actually several different incidents. They were able to get Alex Tagliani back into the pits and restarted. Patrick Carpentier has climbed out of his car. Michael Andretti has gone a lap down and is trying to make repairs to the front of the car. And Kenny Breck, they're going to go to work on that left front suspension, but it's going to put him at a great disadvantage. Looking for Michael. Top left of your screen. Looked like there was contact there from behind. It's a little hard to tell with the long lens that we use. You can see he stuffed the nose into the tires. Now, coming into turn five, down from 175 miles an hour under braking. We have Mauricio Guzelman underneath. Breck turned inside. There was already a car there, wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. And then Tagliani and Carpentier coming down the hill, going into 10. And that ended the day for Carpentier. As we said, Tagliani got restarted. Jan? The work continues for Kenny Breck, not only on the front of the car, but the rear. They changed the rear wing, which maybe that related to the Michael Andretti incident since they were in close proximity. But as far as the front left suspension goes, still a lot of work left here for Kenny Breck. Gary Gerald on Michael Andretti. Michael Andretti is expected back in the pits for a third time. They sent him out. You saw him without a nose. They got the new nose in place. Here comes Michael back in now. This is the top off fuel only. He's used precious little, but they hope it'll enter. He leaves behind Mayo oh. Gidley. Meanwhile, Alex Tagliani fire, is behind Fire him. in the pits, Gary. Down in the target pit. And they're still fighting it down in the target pits. We're not sure. I assume this started on a refuel because you can see the starter for the engine laying out there. And they're still dumping water all over everything. Remember, you don't see a methanol fire when it's burning. Cart officials in there. Now they've calmed down now, so maybe, you know, we haven't seen anything like that since the early Michigan 500s when, uh, when 
one of Herm Johnson's cars, uh, Herm Johnson was driving the car, had a, a pit fire. Medical crew also going to the scene in those pits. Uh, Gary, Jerry, we are going to get back to you, but <laughs> let's go back before we do that and see if we can tell what happened there. Look at the top left of the screen. As the car leaves, you can see everyone run. For our new fans, as you said, Paul, you can't see methanol burn. The most frightening sort of fire, all you can do is look for the heat shimmer and start to feel as you put the fire out for a heat source until you have it finally extinguished. Yeah, you can, you can actually see this. We're going to look at it in slow-mo. And we can show it to you now. Now watch as the car, upper right-hand corner there, pulls away. You can see the huge flow of fuel out of the end of the nozzle. Big spray ignites immediately. And people start running, looking for water buckets. What you also see that is so special to this series is not just that team and the officials, but guys from pits on either side running to help. Jan? Yes, and I can tell you, looking over the crew here and looking at the cart safety team, it appears as though no serious injury. A couple of the crew members do possibly have some slight burns, but thankfully looking over the crew and adjacent pits here, it does appear as though thankfully no serious injury. In fact, some guys getting their gear back on again, wanting to go back to work. Yeah, just so, so we know, we only saw a rear view of the car. Which, which car are we talking here, and is there any damage to pit equipment? I do not have that information yet, Paul, as far as the hose. Uh, I don't see any damage to the actual fuel tank itself. We'll try and dig in deeper and let you know. And the car should be deadly, again, working for a strategy to get off pace of everyone else. Kenny Breck, that was some fine work. I can't get that in my local shop. <laughs> not at all. It looked like the end of the fuel nozzle failed. There's a butterfly there, which instantaneously closes when they remove the nozzle to stop the fuel flow. And as he, as the fueler pulled out the fuel nozzle, you could see the spray of fuel over the top of the car and the pit box. We have all of these protections to actually prevent that. Jan Bikas. With Rick Duman. Rick, I saw you possibly had a little bit of burn there. Everything okay? What happened? Yeah, just uh, I think the fuel vent just stuck open. It never got fully engaged and just leaked fuel from the moment on. And uh, when he pulled out, it stuck open. The dead man shut off. So the only thing that was actually on fire, I think, was the uh, fuel in the hose. Uh, everybody seems to be okay. We'll change the hose and uh, get back at it. How about yourself? I saw some possible burn up on your uh, forehead. Yep, I'll just do it after the... Uh, Take care of it after the race. <laughs> a true mechanic wanting to get back into the fight, guys. Well, given uh, bright sunshine and record temperatures here today, it might get very uncomfortable if you have even the slightest of burns. The field now drops the pace car, coming onto the pit straight, and green flag comes out again. The starter stand just up under that overpass. DeFerrin leads him down to one. Catherine Evans chases heavy braking by Catherine Evans. Cristiano D'Amata takes a hard look at Roberto Moreno. Sequence of right-handers. And now the serious climbing begins. Make this left-hand turn. Jimmy Vassar just turns into it. He's followed by Giancaro. They start the climb that takes them eventually to the top of the corkscrew. 150 foot climb, most difficult corner, turn number six, blind on entry. Now up over the top, 175 miles an hour, on the brakes as they come over this rise. Oftentimes you'll see wheels lock up there just before they plunge downhill in the corkscrew. Adrian Fernandez, currently 12th, he started 17th. Another good move. Christian Fittipaldi started 19th, is now up to 13th. Fernandez Racing announcing today the addition of Don Halliday, who is currently Kenny Breck's engineer, the engineer that did so well for Andre Ribeiro. Also brought Dario Franchitti a tie for the championship with Juan Montoya in 99, and also such great success for Breck last year in his rookie season, as well as this year. Announced not only as a technical director, but also as a part team owner at Fernandez Racing. And Kenny Breck is well, well behind this race. Last position and laps down from the leader. And during that last yellow, you can be sure that Roger Penske and Tim Sendrick, the two communicating to Gilles DeFerrin and Elio Castanevis, told them exactly what the championship situation was, how many laps Kenny Breck was down. These guys know they just have to set a good, comfortable pace, get to that first pit stop, and then from there, make sure that they get these cars to the checkered flag. Let's go 
back to Jan Bika, still keeping track of the target team. Yes, the target team is in the process of changing the probe, the fill probe, which of course now is not only the fill, it's also the vent. You heard Rick Duman say that he thought that the vent stuck open. Now, it turned out that Rick Duman and another member here, Sean Robb, were the only two that appeared to be burned. We are obviously talked to Rick. Sean Robb, they are taking to the medical center. He was awake, alert, seemed as though visibly he was okay, but they want to take him to the medical center to be absolutely sure. Well, Jan, before you run off, let me just ask this question. What, those are big hoses. There's fuel, a lot of it in those hoses. Is there any way that they can be compensated for whatever fuel they're losing, or does it matter? I have a feeling, Paul, I will check with CART, but I assume that whether you burn it or whether you spill it, you've used it, and that's how it goes. All right, let's go to Gary Gerald. Patrick Carpentier has come back. He's changed his clothes out of the driver's uniform. Tell us what happened, and was the contact with your teammate, uh, Alex Tagliani? Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's so sad. We're both uh, up the front there and uh, could have had a great race. I think we both had uh, good cars. Uh, Michael uh, was struggling in that corner, and... Uh, uh, Alex went by on the outside and got the dirt a little bit, could not accelerate, so I thought I had an opening, I went on the inside, and uh, at the last minute I realized that uh, it was not an opening, so uh, I was not far enough ahead uh, to make the pass, and Alex uh, didn't cut me any uh, slack, he just moved right in, and I was, uh, I was still there, so I hit him, and unfortunately he took both cars up. Now, because it's hard to pass in this course, you have to be aggressive. Are we apt to see more of this type thing happening as this race progresses? Yeah, it depends how much the guys are going to stretch, uh, far, how far apart they're going to be during the race. But uh, at the restart, uh, you, uh, you'll you probably see a couple of these things. But uh, hey, it's racing. It happened a couple of years ago with Alex. And uh, hey, I'm sorry for today, but uh, we'll take it back in Australia. All right, thanks. Thank you. Well, right down there on the turn onto the pit straight. Casey Mears is off. There's a second car involved as well. Patrick Carpente, probably one of the most difficult uh, decisions. It's, it's Max Wilson is the other car. Ma Max has been having a lot of trouble with the gearbox this weekend. Both his primary and his backup car. For some reason, when he's downshifting, he's got a problem with it. They've gone for full course yellow again, and so hopefully both of those cars, well, Max will get restarted, and Casey already saw is on his way. You can see Michael went off as well. Looked like Casey spun just on the exit of the corner. Everyone else taking evasive maneuver techniques here. Here he is coming into turn 11. Oh, he has more than a little help there as Brian Herta comes down the inside. We'll look at it one more time. Brian Herta down the inside, gets speared by Brian Herta. Casey Mears then spins off. Max Wilson has no place to go. He stays to the outside. Well, Casey got nailed in the back, too. So there was actually all three cars in contact at one level. Look at Herta's nose at one time or another. And there's less of it now. So disappointing for Brian Herta. He's done so well here in the past, qualifying t second twice on the pole three times. Two victories here. Worst he had ever qualified was yesterday in fifth until his disqualification, moving him to the back of the grid, and that puts you in a desperate situation. You can't run the race that you want to run. Brian Herta into the pits. You saw that Kenny Breck also came into the pits at the same time Herta did. Not far away, uh, the Monterey Peninsula, Carmel, and some folks with a lot of money. get the A21 with the Intel Celeron processor, but I'll take 100 bucks off, only till October 21st. You might uh, want to pick that up. All right, now we are smoking. Call now. Operators are standing by, and these things are going fast. You might want to go to the website. Can I make the numbers flash on screen now? No. I drive a 900 horsepower champ car for a living, and it's a pure adrenaline rush. So whether you drive one of these 
or one of these. Safety is my number one concern. There's a booklet full of valuable information. It's free. All you have to do is ask for it. Knowing that you and your family are safe is the greatest adrenaline rush in the world. Barry Bonds in his own class. He sits one on one with Roy Firestone. Point blank. Will you play for the New York Yankees? Do you think there were people who didn't want you to set this record? And not for the best of reasons. Barry Bonds, the Sunday conversation on Sports Center following the Raiders in the court. Sunday night football. The Oakland Raiders and my Indianapolis Colts. Peyton Manning and our highly potent. Operation ready to take on Rich Gannon and the Raiders. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Well, I'll tell you what, here at Laguna Seca, I don't think we've ever seen anything like the first few laps of this race. Brian Hurd in the pits trying to get a new nose, and Jan's right there. Yeah, Paul, and they're having trouble. They went with the impact gun to get the screws off the nose to replace it, and one of the screws stripped. Now they're going to the manual method. Thankfully, they were able to break this loose now. So the key for Brian Herta, who's now at 56 seconds and counting, can they get this nose on in time without going down a lap? The cars will be coming down the hill shortly, and of course, it doesn't matter if you strip out a screw as long as it beat the pace car out. Yep. They also can just put it on with a couple of screws and then come back the next lap. Here is, uh, here is where this all began. Look right here, coming down into turn 11. Brian Herta trying to get down the inside of Max Wilson. Up over the curb, pushes Max wide as he gets into the back of Casey Mears. Casey stands on the throttle to try to get it all the way around. Assuming that Joe DeFerrin wins this, big assumption at this point, Kenny Breck is going to be 32 points behind. They're pushing the car behind the wall. win hopefully will we lose maybe will we learn definitely from the quarter mile at st louis <laughs> To the third turn at Talladega. To the pits of Laguna Seca. Wherever innovation is the margin between win and lose, the pros reach for the same tools you do. Craftsman, the official tools of CART, NHRA, and NASCAR. Stone learns on the track, we put into our tires. Like the Dueler, engineered to distinctly boost your confidence, on road or off. The distinction is Bridgestone. Receive a free pair of Olympus Trooper binoculars when you purchase four select Bridgestone Dueler tires. Certain conditions apply. The first oil filter ever made back in 1923 wasn't called an oil filter. It was called a Purilator. Today, every car on the road relies on technology pioneered by Purilator. And the same company that invented the oil filter just keeps reinventing it. So that for anyone who cares enough to change their own oil, Purilator continues to mean pure oil then, pure oil now, pure oil later. The green flag has just come out. At the Monster Raceway at Laguna Seca, Jill DeFerrin answers it, followed by Catherine Evans. The rookie Scott Dixon trying to wrap up Rookie of the Year honors. Very racy Cristiano D'Amata coming in tight on Roberto Moreno as they head through the first hairpin. First 14 laps of this race have been, to say the least, interesting. Kenny Breck already out will be scored for 25th. Cristiano D'Amata turning one of the fastest laps ever at Laguna Seca in preseason testing. He and his teammate Christian Fittipaldi struggled earlier in the weekend. Started to get things right just in time for qualifying. Dr. 
Cristiano yesterday was at a complete loss. They just didn't understand where the setup had gone. But we've heard that from a number of the teams and a number of the engineers this weekend. Parker, one of those teams is the Team Cool Green and Dario Franchitti, who's had success here in the past. I just checked again with Kyle Moyer. Same situation as the two previous days. They just can't find a way to get grip. They have tremendous uh, understeer going into the corner, tremendous oversteer coming out. Not good. Gary Paul and I met with uh, Dario's engineer Ian Watt earlier today, and he said they've changed everything. They've put on Michael's setup, Paul Tracy's setup on the car, then everything possible to this car, and it doesn't change. They haven't been able to get any sort of response from any sort of input. Well, take a look to the inside as Tagliani now trying to get back for past errors. And he went off with Carpentier, now working up through the field. Just ahead of him was Frank Kitty and Kidley. Frank Kitty is currently running 17th. And for Tagliani, that's two laps behind the lead. For Jill DeFerrin, it's exactly what he wants in a strange way. And that is that with now two restarts in addition to the start, he has had the advantage of a very clear race course in front of him. Had we not gone full course caution twice, he may have been down on the back of the field by now and had to work his way through traffic, which here is always a challenge. And every driver in this field will fight very hard not to go a lap down. We've seen races in the past where just as the leader's gone by, a full course yellow has come out. They will not want that to happen. Kenny Breck out and 25th. Here's Jan Bikas. Yes, and Kenny, I know they tried hard to fix the car. What happened between you and Mauricio? Well, we got together going into turn four, and that was it. Ran the front suspension. Now tell me, they also changed the rear wing. Was there also contact in the first corner? No, we went side by side through turn one and three, uh, two, and uh, and uh, three. I got clear and uh, went down into turn four and, um, well, five, I think it is on the track, and then uh, braked and turned in, and uh, there he came, and boom. I know it's important for you to get championship points here. Now how do you regroup and try and get that focus back? Do you think now that championship is gone? No, he's not gone till the last race is over, so we'll just have to wait and see. But it was unfortunate for the Shell car and Shell crew and everybody here, so... Sorry you're out early, Kenny. Thank you. Uh, actually, that, that's not entirely true. Uh, Kenny Breck needed to remain, assuming DeFerrin victories within 13 points in the next two races, have scored 13 points in the next two races. He will have to do that, absolutely, uh, at Australia now. And considering, uh, we always hate to go this direction, but if it ends as they are right now, then all DeFerrin will have to do is finish fourth or better in one of the final two races. So, Kenny Breck stay could not only be the end of a day, it might mean the end of a championship. Having said that, I got to tell you, I hope not, because one, I want to see it battle to the end of the year, and two, I really want to see Kenny do well. He's a great guy. If you look at the results from the last two races of last year at Surfer's Paradise and at the California Speedway, Jill DeFerrin, whoa, we got whoa. wheels off. Oh, whoa, Roberto simple. Moreno, it looks like. Yep. Drop wheels off on the left side, came back across the track, and had big contact with the tire attenuators on the inside of the course. Roberto Moreno was running six. We're going to full course yellow. And that's Jordan. There's the onboard camera view. If this was scheduled to be his last race, according to some sources of the team. Moreno, there, that's more than just Wing Parker. There's some damage out there, and part of it is Jordan's car. Well, that was right in front of our position, and I couldn't help but look out the window when I... <laughs> what a great guy. He yeah. does a little of everything. I'll clean Core this safety. up a little while I'm Watch out here. Watch as he comes through turn four. He'll drop the left rear wheel off the outside of the eight pe or the exit curbs, comes across the track, and has heavy, heavy contact with the inside barrier. All right, so 18 laps complete. Pit stops are coming. Here's Gary. First of the leaders is Elio Castro Nevis. Jill DeFerrin stays out on course. Routine service for Elio. It looks good in about eight and a half seconds. He is on the way. So as Gary suggested. Now this is a little surprising, Paul, because the fuel window opened on lap 17. I would have thought that all of the leaders would have come in with this yellow. Well, Castro Nevis comes in, but Dixon, Canaan, Tracy, DeMonte, Vasquez, Rupera, Fernandez, Picano all stay out. The accident area. Dario Franchitti did pit. There's Moreno. 
Starts to get a little loose on the exit. Left rear wheel falls off the exit curb. Spins back across the inside. Now on board with Michelle Jourdain Jr. coming out of turn three. Rolls into turn four. Lots of smoke, lots of dust. Where do I go? He loses direction of where the track goes. It makes a slight bend to the right there. Drops the left side wheels off. Can't keep it on the track. Makes contact with the concrete wall. Well, in addition to Elio Castroneves and Dario Franchini, Tori Takagi, Christian Fittipaldi, and Oriol Servia also stopped on lap 18, taking advantage of this, the third full course caution of the day, and this, the first quarter of the race. We have got to cut cost, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com to save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com, we save 10% on online express shipping. That's that is one. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. Mm. Makes all the difference. Bingo. That's good. That's good. Right on the nose. Yeah, that's really that's good. Good. That's good. 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 Get any Yamaha ATV for just one dollar a day during Yamaha All-Terrain Value Days. It's here, waiting for you. Inside is unlimited strength and power. It builds confidence and reshapes your body. It can change everything. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy-to-use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 Health Club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance, all in the convenience of your own home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Bowflex is real. The results are real. The question is, are you ready for Bowflex? For a free video and brochure, call or go online at bowflexdirect.com. Do the research, listen to real customers, then place your order online and get started. Bowflex. Who said change isn't easy? Here's a look down from the Honda Helicamp at the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey under full course caution right now. The leader all the way thus far has been Jill DeFerrin. Well, Honda announced on Friday that it will leave the kart series after the 2002 season. Honda's been a kart engine supplier for the past eight years. The move was in response to kart's approval of a normally aspirated engine for the 2003 racing season. It was not unexpected. The fact that over the, the last year or so, there's been a lot of changes in, in, in rules affecting engine manufacturers made with little regard to our time, our investment, and the amount of money, the people we have involved. It, it just, you know, we, we felt that there's, a, there's no respect for their partners in this business, and we just basically lost trust and confidence in them. So we don't need to work in an environment like that. It's just easier to go. Yeah pop-off valve thing that happened back in June and now this rule change for the 03 season um, basically we determined that we can't continue to participate in a series where we can't trust what their next decision will be. And Parker there are a number of unanswered questions within that announcement. Uh, one is what about car uh, events that are sponsored by Honda such as this one? What about Motegi which is owned by Honda? And certainly this was just much more than a corporate decision. It was also a very personal decision. Tom Elliott, Robert Clark, the two individuals you saw interviewed, have put their heart and souls into this business, into this racing series. And their very strong statements say something that have left a lot of people with this normally aspirated decision normally exasperated now. <laughs> Sorry. What's also interesting about it is the other engine manufacturers also seem to be upset for one reason or another. There's a news conference called on Tuesday that Ford's calling, and that may be a similar announcement. Uh, that is, we're going to so fulfill our current obligations, and then we're gone as well on Tuesday. We don't know that. That's speculation. 
All right, let's go down pit side. Elio Castro Nevis has stopped. Gary Gerald, it seemed uh, like everybody should have come in. Well, I, we're going to ask. Tim Sindrick, uh, you expressed a little surprise that others didn't follow Elio into the pits. Why would that be? Obviously, we were hoping that more guys would come with us on the way in so we wouldn't be so far back in the field. But with three cars involved and the damage that was out there, we thought it was going to be a long yellow. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. So um, hopefully, maybe this assures us that either way we'll win, but it wasn't planned that way. Now, how much does it impact the strategy? You, the, the team is totally split with Jill staying out there. What impact may that have from your side with Castro Nevis? Well, we're trying to do it in one more stop, obviously. At this point in time, Jill's going to have to do two more stops. It's just a matter of how far out in front he gets and how many yellows there are. So, see All right, happens. playing a little chess here at Laguna Seca. Ah, a little strategy is good for the soul. Brian Herta, despite all of his problems starting in the back, is now 16th. He's on his way into the pits, and this is uh, continuing to be a fascinating story here, Jan. Yeah? Yes, and as we await Brian Herta, who will be coming in behind us, we want to talk to Ron Dixon, the president of Forsyth Racing. Now, we talked about the open of the show, his disqualification at the, fi at the, fi at the end of this race. Now, what do you do? Well, the way the penalty is imposed, um, it's no advantage to us what happened. And obviously, the disadvantage is we go to the back of the grid. As I said to the uh, officials, that if you applied that rule after this race very few cars will pass scrutineering simply because you've got a, a mechanical failure of a component which is beyond our control yet they took the view they wanted to impose the penalty so i think that uh, many teams are of the same opinion that most cars would not pass post scrutineering will you go as far as officially protesting all those cars as they roll off the track I think that's a decision we've got to take towards the end of the event. I don't, I'm uh, obviously uh, a lot of people have spoken about that, but uh, I'm not so sure that uh, that would be the position. Although, you know, you got to tell your sponsors something. Why did you go from fifth to last? Because the screw came loose? It's, it's just rubbish. It's rubbish. Thanks, Ron. And it, it did cause many of us to think about last year at Mid Ohio when uh, Joe DeFerrin sat on the pole but then flipped the car upside down. We're pretty sure that one didn't pass either. And we don't understand all of the ramifications of this, and obviously we're going to be doing a little more research on that for you. We'll be right back. I just saved her $120 on a set of good years. At Mavis Discount Tire, it's our job to save people money on their tires. Mavis even has four all-season steel-belted radials from just $99 every day. Four tires for $99. Mavis Discount Tire guarantees low prices for the brands you want. Call 1-800-4-TRACTION. We're going to save you money, a lot of money. Hello, I am the SLA 3000. I function as CEO of CompuDom. Back in the year 2001, CompuDom installed LightPath's voice, data, and internet services, enabling me to evolve. Today, with the help of LightPath's fiber optic communications network, CompuDom is able to CompuDominate the market. Ha ha. Thanks, LightPath. 1000. Before this year's World Series becomes history, we live a great World Series moment from the past. I don't believe what I just saw! Tonight on ESPN Classic. Unbelievable! The world saw what Gibson did on the field. Now hear what happened behind the scenes. He heard Vince Scully tell millions of viewers, Gibson will not swing a bat tonight. Gibson heard that. He said, my ass. The Kurt Gibson home run on Battle Line. Tonight on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC now. 7 Eastern tonight, it's Sports Center. The Mariner, Mariners are facing elimination. Barb takes on the Ravens defense and the PGA Las Vegas showdown. Just some of the subjects. For more, log on to ESPN.com. We're anticipating the green flag. They are in the corkscrew and beginning to sweep downhill. Green flag should come out as they hit the pit straight this time by. I'm still a little uh, surprised that more cars didn't pit since that fuel window did open up. The advantage, DeFerrin has clear track ahead. Castro Nevis now has to work his way through the field from 13th. And what it does is put the rookie, Scott Dixon, right on top of the back end of Gil DeFerrin. Green flag is out. 
Dixon stays right with him. Tony Kanan comes down, Paul Tracy. And Cristiano D'Amato go at it. And Jimmy Vassar, then Junquera is back there. Cristiano has been working hard every high-speed lap we've had. We've had 12 of 22 laps now under yellow. It's probably a welcome break for these guys. This track physically is very demanding, only second to mid-Ohio. In certain sections of this track, especially with this heat, become very, very difficult to drive. The downhill sweeping left-hander turn nine, almost four Gs of lateral cornering, cornering load. At the end of this race, it's difficult to hold on to the steering wheel. And it should do nothing but get hotter as we watch Bruno Zancara, currently seventh, top of the corkscrew. He starts the 25th lap. You notice that as he goes up to adjust on his steering wheel, he's one of the few drivers that use the EFI system, not the Pi system that seems so popular for uh, control and data retrieval. Frequency hopping for security signal. What I've been noticing with this onboard is how different the pace is between now and qualifying. The car's running six to seven seconds a lap slower. Because of the heat, the fuel load, even though they're decreasing in these cars, we'll have to be coming in soon. At least the first 11 cars, now 12 cars. Around lap 30 or so, we're anticipating stops. DeFerrin slowly inching away from Scott Dixon. Dixon in second, you're on board with him now. Of the real players, only Elio Castroneves has uh, made a stop of significance. There have been a lot of cars in and out of the pits doing other work, but uh, Jan and Gary, can you kind of run us around what has actually uh, happened in the pits and what's anticipated? We'll start with Jan. I can, Paul, and to answer Parker's question as to why more people did not pit, it turns out most every person up and down pit road said, if DeFerrin pits, come in. If he doesn't, stay out. So it was a case of them thinking that Roger Penske and Gilles DeFerrin would have the strategy to beat. Of course, Castro Neves already knew what DeFerrin was going to do, decided he would try an alternate strategy. So right now, they tend to be keying off the man who right now has got two wins in a row. Gary? Yeah, it's interesting here to note on fuel consumption. We've had an awful lot of yellow, which impacts fuel consumption. But in the past, the Honda power plant, and that's the one that Joe DeFerrin has, he has not had what we would call spectacular mileage. And talking with the team before the start of the race, they told us that it is, you really have to work to make two miles per gallon. They're allocated 1.85, of course. Now we checked in with Scott Dixon and Russ Cameron telling us as we watch Castro Nevis pick up a position that uh, for Dixon, they've been making miles comfortably at better than two. They can go 2.1, 2.2, they think. So what we're now wondering is, will Dixon be able to stretch a couple of more laps in DeFerrin? Will that, in fact, give him any kind of advantage? And as we watch Elio Castro Nevis, you saw him get around Memo Gidley. That moved him to 11. Earlier, he got around Mac Pappas. So since the restart, he's gotten around two cars slowly on the track trying to work his way forward, adding to the existing advantage that or it might turn out to be a disadvantage, the additional impact of his stop out of sequence. And the difference between 1.85 miles per gallon and 2.1 miles per gallon is an additional four laps around this 2.2 mile circuit. We've had 12 laps of yellow, so maybe they're anticipating with enough yellow, enough incidents on the back end of this, that they'll do one full stop and then maybe just a splash and go towards the end of the event. But 
as Jan said, what we've seen is a lot of follow the leader. You watch what the lead car does. And I think Tim Cedric realized as soon as that pit window opened up, he brought Castro Neves in. Castro Neves grabs another position, this time 10th from Mauricio Guzman. He's now passed Pappas, Gidley, and Guzman since we went green just a few laps ago. Uh, with Castro Neves, it's going to be a nice display of driving here. Again, just a car just barely drops the wheel off, and every time they do that, a spray of dust and sand up on the track. Adds to the already uh, slick conditions that are created through a combination of running in the weekend and very warm temperatures today. Without the pressure of the championship battle, nearly as hard forcing down on the shoulders of Gilda Ferrett. He's inching away from Scott Dixon. Dixon now 1.2 seconds behind the leader. But given our first 28 laps, this race is far from over. The 75 Civic was first in Honda's long line of clean cars. Today, more than 88% of our cars are low emission vehicles. And we're planning for tomorrow with our zero emission fuel cell vehicle. Is it any wonder Honda was recently named the cleanest car company in the world? At 160 miles an hour, your heart rate triples. At 200 miles an hour, your muscles strain and distend. At 230 miles an hour, it's not uncommon for headaches to begin. And that's just what the crew is going through. Hey, you're clear, you're clear. Now, coming around the home turn and into the stretch of evil. There's a horse race on the TV, you really ought to see. It's full of top-notch athletes and speeding rivalries. You'll hoot and scream and holler, a lung you just might blow. When your pony's got him by a nose, you'll scream, Oh, baby, go! Baby, go! Preview the World Thoroughbred Championships, Friday on ESPN2. Offense versus offense on ESPN Sunday Night Football. Tonight, Indy's top trio of Manny, James, and Harrison. He's gone. That's a touchdown. Go head-to-head -head with Oakland season vets, Gannon, Rice, and it is caught for the touchdown. And Brown. If this game is anything like last year's, it's a touchdown. Fasten your seatbelts. Raiders, Colts, 8.30 tonight on ESPN. It all starts with NFL primetime at 7.30. Jack Sprague and the rest of the truck series race tonight at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Sprague, the current points leader and is the pole sitter for the Orleans 350 NASCAR Craftsman truck. Scott Dixon may take about a 1.2 second interval behind Jill DeFerrin. I've been watching back to Castro Nevis, and that group of DeFerrin, Dixon, Kanan, Tracy, DeMott, and Vassar are slowly pulling away from the rest. Now, Castro Nevis 16 seconds behind his teammate, Joe DeFerrin. So, we've seen in the past, Paul, the strategy where Gilles DeFerrin has just gone to full rich, stood on the gas. It's how he won Portland, Houston, and just tried to get a big enough interval in order to do a splash and go towards the end of the event. But Scott Dixon, even Tony Kanaan, just another three seconds back, are holding on at this point. Well, Gary Gerald, uh, who keeps track of such things. Gary, if you're, if you're with us. Temperature is 88, just ambient right now. 88 ambient and 117 on the track. And uh, here's Michelle Jordan, Paul, while we have an opportunity, who's made his way back after that early problem, the flurry of problems. I noticed you had a little ice bag on your thumb. Uh, are you okay there? Are you caught in the wheel? It's okay. It's just, it was a little bit of pain, but, but they x-rayed it, and it's okay. They did have x-rays on it, and everything's okay. Can you tell us about what happened here in the early going? Well, I mean, the car was pretty good the track is really really slippery so i think that's why it's so many yellows early on and he was just trying to stay there i think roberto lost it 
and put a, a lot, a lot of the smoke. I'm sure he just went to the power and I just tried to follow uh, Bruno. I, I thought I saw him going to the left and I tried to go behind him and suddenly when I came out of the, of the smoke I was in the dirt and just lost it and went into the wall. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Unfortunately, the track moves to the right there. And for Michelle Jourdain Jr., uh, the uh, report was uh, Dominguez is going to replace him in that car for the remainder of the season. And you would think with only a few races to go, Paul, that most of the plans for the teams would be set. And in fact, we were counting up today the number of drivers whose futures are up in the air, the number of teams that haven't decided on drivers this weekend. Jimmy Vassar, finally probably one of the worst kept secrets in the paddock was announced as the driver at Bobby Ray Hall. We don't know if there will be a second car or if there will be who will be driving that car. And you look up and down the list as far as who will be at Pac West, at Patrick, Ganassi, Sigma, Arciero Blair, all the way down. Nan, you mentioned Dominguez at Herdez. So still a lot of drivers not sure where they will be driving next year. And right now we're counting uh, 10 potential positions open and within the series itself. 12 drivers vying for it. Let's go back to the pits. Paul, talking with Michelle Jourdain, I did not ask him on her air about his future, but there has been speculation raised, particularly on this day, that one of the Indy Lights drivers, Mario Dominguez, may in fact be in the 16 car at the next race, Surface Paradise Australia, and also at Fontana. We asked a member of the team about that earlier, if they could confirm that, and he said, no, I can't confirm that, then raised his eyebrows as if to indicate there may be a question about a driver change. I asked Michelle, off the record, together, what is your future? Will you be in the car at the next race? His eyes began to cloud up a bit, and he said, I, I hope so. But he didn't really answer. I don't know that he knows. I don't know that he fears. Speculation, of course, can be just brutal as far as these guys are concerned. And he's in a very tough spot right now. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Oh, it's a rough time of the season for anybody that does not yet have a deal for next year. The emotion in the paddock is very, very high. We have, of course, a championship battle. We've got drivers like DeFerrin and Casneves set for next year. Their futures at Penske, no problem there, of course. But then other drivers with only a few races remaining driving absolutely as hard as they can, trying to make a good impression on, impression on sponsors, teams, and owners, trying to get a drive, which will determine their future. For many of these drivers, they may not return to the kart series. We're going to look at the interval back to third place. You'll notice missing back there is Tony Kanan. Well, actually, no. <laughs> My mistake. We are anticipating a couple of stops here. And let's go to Jan Bikas. With a quick update, Paul, I was able to ask Don Halliday, the engineer for Kenny Breck, and soon to be the engineer, as you've already said, for Adrian Fernandez. He says a pit stop today is 35 seconds of track time plus whatever the length of your stop. So a 10-second stop will take you off the track for 45 seconds. Tony Kanaan is going to give us a demonstration of that here now as he rolls on to pit road. So that, Parker, will give you an idea to keep an eye on Castro Neves and his interval back. Not expecting any changes for Tony Kanaan. And obviously he wants a full load of fuel. He gets it in 11.6, so 11.6 plus 35. That's how far he'll drop back from where he was. Yeah, and that's, that's what I was talking about. They were going to call Tony Kanaan in the pit. He wasn't quite missing when I mentioned it. Back to the front of the field. Here is De De Farron, 34 laps. Complete Dixon staying with him. Kanaan Honda powered. Obviously, De Farron Honda powered as well. So we would expect action from Gilles De Farron and the Team Penske organization in just a lap or two. The interval between De Farron and Castro Nevis and the remaining group of cars that came in on that last yellow. Now 22.8 seconds. Gilles Deferne continuing to open up that gap. Scott Dixon, however, has stayed with him. Now back 1.9 seconds. Well, Dixon's running on the philosophy, and you have to run on this. Follow the leader. Yeah, you're running second as he's doing. You, you just have to go wherever Deferne goes. Paul Tracy is now making the turn down for the pit road out of third place. Down the center. That's the boy. A solid stop. New four-tire change for Tracy. Moving to the front wing. I couldn't catch it. 
Stop. Running path 12 seconds, 13 and a half. Tracy's away. Looked like they may have made a change to the front wing, but I'm not sure about that. It's great to watch how methodical, how precise the tire changers are, and how fast they do it while looking like they're doing it in slow motion. You saw him uh, helping clean the track by picking up barrier tires earlier. Roberto Moreno, of course, out of the race, now with John Beekes. And Roberto, what happened to you down there that got you in those tires? Uh, basically, um, I was saving fuel behind Paul Tracy, and then I realized that out of that quick corner in turn four, he was quite slow. And if, uh, many times I got a run on him, so I thought, okay, I turned the fuel up the next lap, get a good uh, num uh, turn three well, and then I make turn four quick and I can pass him. So I did all that and I got out of turn three really well. Turn four was good and then the power was a bit too much and I uh, got my wheel on the dirt. Well, actually I start spinning very early and then I got my wheel on the dirt because when I was right behind him I, I lost my downforce suddenly. So uh, it was my mistake and uh, what I would like to do is to say to all my supporters, especially to my friends at Vistio, I'm sorry. Well, while he is sorry behind us, his teammate Jimmy Vassar is going to make a pit stop. Thank you, Roberto. And Cristiano Dermata is already in the pits. We're watching him partway through the stop. But Jill DeFerrin, the leader of the race, is also due in at the conclusion of this lap. And the assumption, of course, is as we watch DeFerrin, that Scott Dixon will be right there with him. We've watched the last few laps as DeFerrin comes down the hill, especially through this next left-hander, how loose the car is. Watch the back step out. He knows that he's coming in soon. He's going to use the tires for everything they're worth. Now through turn 10, he'll stay to driver's left. In this time, in this time. Pits are clear. And into the pits. Let's go to Gary. Shell DeFerrin's got a wide open pit road. He makes the turn. You hear Roger Penske counting him down. There he is, and the Penn State team goes to work. Camera looks from the front. We're at the back of the car. Off the jack, waiting for fuel. Still waiting. Still waiting. 13 plus 8 seconds. Watch your speed. 13.8 for Jill DeFerrin. Mauricio Guzman also stopped. So did Jimmy Vassar. But Scott Dixon... <laughs> Just showing you how wrong you can be. They kept that car out. Scott Dixon's gotten great mileage while going very, very quick all year long. Also, Bruno Jankara in second place now. Both Toyota powered, both going very fast while getting great mileage. And watch when Scott comes in and they pull the wheels off the amount of brake dust that pours out of the wheels. The car is used absolutely to its limit here at Laguna Seca. When they say it's going to be a quick stop. Okay, here we are, right up the middle for us, okay? Yeah. Right on the mark. Fuel's going to take 13, isn't it, Jan? Well, that's if you put all the fuel in. Uh -huh. they, Rocky, just give us a little extra, okay? When they tell us it's going to be... A little more than we agreed on. When, right they, on the when they say it's a quick stop, sometimes that means they're not flying. I'm putting all the fuel in. Be a quick one. Get your fuel and get ready. Aha! Uh -huh. see? And, 9.8 seconds, that's not all the fuel. Uh-huh. So they're completely splitting the strategy. Elio Castroneves, as he comes around, and this will give him key position now in the race. As we suspected, the cars that came in on lap 17 now will move to the front, that entire pack of cars. These guys need one more stop, and then that's it. And looking back to Scott Dixon, who came out, of course, behind Elio Castroneves. And we'll look up track for DeFerrin, who is now be behind Dixon on the racetrack. So, as always, the pit stops make a world of difference at this course. They've just done it again. Introducing new Castrol AccuVision rain repellent. Unlike Rain-X, AccuVision can go on in just one minute, so you can easily apply it whenever it's convenient. New Castrol AccuVision, the one-minute rain repellent. Yeah, I'm a flag man. Third generation flag man. 
I do my best work for the Suzuki GSX-R line. Each one is special. The GSX-R 600 is agile, aerodynamic, so it's light, like a bird, like a bird. And the 750 wins everything because it's quick, like a cat. And the all-new GSX-R 1000 is just going to dominate racing. And all that power and super lightweight, I'm going to be like... Ugh, okay, there, it's my back. The old back. Ugh. We have got to cut cost, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com, save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com, we save 10% on online express shipping. That's uh, that is one. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. Mm. Makes all the difference. Bingo. Yeah, that's good. Right on the nose. Yeah, that's really good. Good. Real sad. Mm -hmm. Real sad. Introducing new Castrol AccuVision rain repellent. Unlike Rain-X, AccuVision can go on in just one minute, so you can easily apply it whenever it's convenient. New Castrol AccuVision, the one-minute rain repellent. Comes in handy, huh? It's a lifesaver. We're looking for a new VP of our Northeast operations. Stop by my office later. Hey, Kevin, aren't you the VP of Northeast Operations? Imagine what the journal could do for you. Get eight weeks of the journal for just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call 800-228-6605. That's 800-228-6605. Welcome back to the Monterey Peninsula. Don't forget, coverage on ABC Sports Monday Night Football. The Washington Redskins take on the Dallas Cowboys. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Nothing has changed since we've left you. It's Castro Nevis, Dixon DeFerrin. But with the first round of stops now totally complete, we'll take a look at the pit summary for you and show who the winners and losers were. Now, Castro Nevis pitted, what, eight? Seven laps ago. Seven. Actually, it was the last yellow that Cash Nevis came in when that fuel window opened up. I was so surprised that Jules DeFerrin, Dixon, and the rest didn't come in because they came in under yellow. The next guys had to pit under green, and now Cash Nevis 2.6 seconds ahead of Dixon, who had that short fuel stop, eight seconds ahead of his teammate Jules DeFerrin. Tim Cedric, president of Penske Racing. I think it was a great call. It's exactly what he should have done. I'm still trying to figure out why the Farron and the rest didn't pit on that last yellow. Yeah, and uh, so that we we totally understand that, that graphic that we showed you, we started at a certain point in the pit stop. Elio actually pitted on lap 18, so it would show as no pit, but everyone in competition has now completed their first round of stops. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Keith Wiggins is the managing director for the Airdaz Bentonhausen racing team. We were talking about speculation that you may have a driver change prior to Australia and for Fontana. Can you tell us if there's any substance to those reports? No, I mean, I've heard the rumors as well, but uh, as far as I, we're concerned, there's no plan to do any changes at this time. So we can look forward to seeing Michelle Jourdain Jr. in that 16 car at our next event? Yes, you can. Thank you very much for putting that to rest. I'm sure Michelle appreciates that as well. Sure he does, thanks. Thank you. Sinji Nakano rolls to a stop just off of the hairpin. Nakano was running 17. At the same time, look at Castro Nevis as he tries to work over Michael Andretti. Now, remember Michael Andretti with his early on problems is well down in 20th position, so Castro Nevis wants to very carefully try to get around him and put him in another lap down. Since Michael's not so easy to do that. Full course caution. The pits are open. Fourth caution of the day. You can see Sinji Nakano slowing down, coming into the second corner. Looked like he was trying to bump start it. Now, since everyone's pitted, we shouldn't anticipate, except for drivers at the very back, we're just going to top up any possible pits. Michael Andretti will be behind the pace car, but he will get waved by since he is a lap down. Sinji Nakano, the cause of the yellow, down in turn number two. Didn't quite get it clear of the racetrack. Interesting little stat here. Of all the drivers running the full season, only Sinji and Paul Tracy have not led a lap this year. 
Why, why would you do what they're doing? <laughs> Man, what, almost, what is that? He almost walled him there. That's very interesting. I think he wants... Uh, was it just because he was fooling yeah, around? Well, Scott. That's the leader in front of you. Oh, that's... Uh, yeah. When you discard a tear-off, it's normally not quite with so much emotion. There was a, a little extra signal, signal there. Mike Landretti now by the pace car. They've picked up the leader, Castro Nevis. They nearly walled each other going up through start finish. Well, we'll look at it first externally. Okay, the full course caution is out. Scott Dixon now either trying to push Castro Nevis up to catch the pace car. I'm not sure what this is. Castro Nevis coming back online towards the inside nearly had wheel to wheel contact there. Dixon looked over several times. Now, watch the discarding of the tear off by Castro Nevis. There's a, a hand motion and some uh, debris given at the same time. Here, take this for your coolers or your turbo intake. Now watch how close Scott Dixon's left wheels come to the concrete wall. Nearly contact on the right side with the right front. Left side wheels nearly up against the concrete wall just past start finish. Jan Bikas, do you have any idea what was going on there? Well, I asked Russell Cameron, who's on the radio to him, and he said, shrugged his shoulders, said, we have no idea either. We're not sure what was up. Well, so the full course caution is out fourth time today. We just want to talk about what, we're, what our plans are for these pit stops. Uh, Pretty sure Penske's are monitoring our, our radio, so we'll monitor things to tell you if you're on target, but so far, so good. Uh, that signals intelligence underway. Most cautions here at 4, 94, 99. We've done it again today. There are 40 laps left. You can express your opinion about the environment on your car, or you can do it with your car. It's America's first gasoline electric hybrid, the Insight from Honda. The most fuel efficient car in the world. If you're concerned about hair loss, call Hair Club now and get this booklet or CD-ROM free. It's packed with the latest information on hair loss breakthroughs from around the world, including hair cloning and genetic therapy. It's loaded with the latest updates on all the proven hair loss options available today, including approved drugs, shampoos, and Hair Club's new procedures. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now to get more information. Hair Club, over 25 years of hair loss experience available at your fingertips. What if an internet provider asked you to draw from your imagination to envision taking your internet experience from every day to extraordinary? You'd create AT&T WorldNet Service Plus. First, you'd start with the fastest logons and better connections. Then you'd add all the latest features like instant messaging and chat for real-time communication. Not to mention cutting-edge tools like video email, so people can see and hear you every time you send a message. And you'd want live customer support. Now you can get it all from the provider-rated Best ISP by PC World. Call now for AT&T WorldNet Service Plus at just $16.95 a month. That's nearly 30% less than the leading ISP. So call 1-800-WORLDNET today and switch to the internet plan that's drawing lots of attention. Still under the full course caution, uh, the field coming down the hill. After 44 laps, here is the recap with Brian Herta up 15 positions, currently 11, and he's been in the pits four different times. You see Cash Nevis there smoke the rear tires coming down into turn 10, trying to get a jump on Scott Dixon. He hasn't been able to do it. He's still looking to get the point for the most laps led. If he can eclipse DeFerrin's lap so far, and 16 of the 18 times at Laguna Seca, the leader at the halfway point has gone on to win the race. So the green comes out on the 46th lap. And once again, how much fuel you can carry, how far is going to come into play here. This is also the critical time. If you're going to make a pass, you want to try and do it while everybody is closely bunched together. Castro Nevis, Dixon, DeFerrin, Takagi, Fittipaldi. Those are your top five. Gary. Quick update on Castro Nevis right now. Tim Sendrick on the radio telling him to go like a bat out of you know what. Uh, he's going to try to get uh, as much distance as he possibly can over Scott Dixon. We're anticipating that Castro Nevis will be pitting in about seven laps. Maybe uh, 51. 
Well, I couldn't quite catch Tim Sendrick there. I apologize. It was over the top of him. But uh, maybe he'll have 51 52 for Castor Nevis. He also did a little cheerleading saying, after that little uh, psych out incident there with Dixon, he says, You're a lot better than that guy behind you. Don't worry about it. I'm still wondering exactly what is going on there. He's just giving him the eye, I think. The eye. Yeah. And New Zealand eye. <laughs> hey, you looking at me? <laughs> Just trying to rattle a little bit for that next restart. It didn't work at all. Castro Nevis now 1.2 seconds ahead of Scott Dixon. Well, you know, for all of his, uh, his joking around and, and great personality, uh, I'm, I'm not thinking that Castro Nevis can be readily intimidated. I mean, he, he knows his job well. His confidence has just skyrocketed since his time at Team Penske. He knows he's correct. He knows that he's championship material now. He shows up every weekend knowing that he can qualify in the pole and win the race. Makes a huge difference for a driver. The difference between hoping to do well and knowing that you can do well and then making the transition of just demanding from yourself and everyone else that you do well. What they're telling Christian Fittipaldi is he needs to get 2.5 miles a gallon to be on the target. 2.15 miles, Paul, give him about 34 laps of green flag running. And Jill DeFerrin running third ahead of these two. And Chicago once again doing a great job keeping it up at the front. Jill DeFerrin has a pretty solid grip on the championship. If they uh, finish this way, and there is a good chance that DeFerrin may actually do better. Then uh, Kenny Breck will certainly have his work cut out for him right now. Breck is 26 points behind DeFerrin in the battle. And there is Jill DeFerrin. Let's just watch him a second. Because I was speculating earlier, as we show you the interval, to his teammate, who is the leader of the race, that I was saying to you, Parker, during the commercial, that you know, maybe if I'm DeFerrin, I kind of take it easy at this point. You were saying, no, that's... that's it's not crazy, it's just I know these guys. They want to win races, just not finish. But you do have to think about the championship. He knows the Breck is out at this point of this race. He knows his past history at Surfer's Paradise where he qualified on the front row next to Juan Montoya last year. He knows that he was the pole winner last year at Fontana. If he has just a bit of good luck, runs the race that they need to, he knows he can come away from both of those events with a lot of points. Knowing that, how hard do you push? Looking back here in the field, Frank Heedy is currently 18. Got off track. You can see the dirt on his tires there. The whole group of guys are running together back in the field. Some of them actually four positions, some of them off pace. Coming into the top of the corkscrew, Tagliani gets underneath him. Not a lot of wiggle room up there. Frank Heedy has no place to drive except straight down over the curbs. So you don't want to have the car loaded when you go off the track because the car will spin, so he just drives it straight down. And Michael Andretti, down in the hairpin. Coming down into the second corner, actually. Michael's back around. We don't know if there was contact. Coming down the hill, under braking, just to the outside of Mimo Ghibli. Tries to go around the outside, but cuts it a little too close, makes contact right front to left rear. And the full course caution comes out again. One more time. You can see Gidley driving right down the white line. Really didn't have any other place to go. Michael trying to dive back towards the apex. And they made contact. You heard the question asked of Michael, are you still running? And obviously, although we didn't hear the answer, he is not. Now, to get back to Gilles DeFerrin for just a moment, Paul, we said, wouldn't you drive a little easier? And just as we said that, we're watching DeFerrin drop wheels off on the exit of the corner. So obviously still driving very, very hard. With this yellow, you have to assume the guys are all coming in for that last and crucial pit stop. They've got to get 2.1 miles per gallon to go 33 laps. Scott Dixon will have a longer stop. He's going to have to take all the fuel, obviously, this time to short fill. Another brilliant bit of strategy from Pac West, as we've seen so many times this year. There's something else you're going to have to think about. 34 laps left, and under the uh, two-hour rule, there's right at uh, 45 minutes and 40 seconds or so, right in there, left to go. You're running laps slower now. Uh, your laps are running just over a minute when you're racing. 
Well, it won't be a timed race if they stay green, but so far we haven't... The word to Elio Castroneves. We've had a total of 15 laps so far this race. Castroneves last stop back on lap 18. I think the call of the race and anybody else that joined them. But these drivers know and these crews know this stop and the next restart could determine the outcome of the race. We'll see the biggest moves as they come out of the pits and after this next green flag down into turn number two. They all tighten up behind the pace car. And uh, just as you thought, comes Castor Nevis and the rest. We'll start with Gary Gerald. Watching now at the split between the Penske pits, it's a luxury that gives them a few extra feet to maneuver. Here comes Castro Nevis. Dixon rolls by. DeFerrin pulls in right behind him. The split strategy of the Penske team is now history. Everybody will be on the same page. Let's see which of the Penske cars rolls. There goes DeFerrin. And DeFerrin beats Castro Nevis. Let's go to Jan. While DeFerrin rolls, here comes Dixon, but he's going uphill. And they almost touched. Oh, that was awesome. DeFerrin beats him out. DeFerrin beats them all out. Jill DeFerrin gets around Castro Nevis, gets around Dixon, and now begins to rejoin the circuit down at the hairpin. I'll show you what it looked like as they were coming out of the pits at the end of that stop. And Jan, update us on that. Well, I think for Scott Dixon, he actually got done more quickly than DeFerrin, but because he is in a pit that is uphill, when he dropped the clutch, he got wheel spin. The car just didn't move as quickly as the launch for DeFerrin. So the crew doing an awesome job, but pit selection here at Laguna Seca on the hill, I think in that case, may have cost him leaving in the lead. Yeah, from that camera angle, it doesn't look like a, a big climb, but there's a substantial angle there at the end of the pits, and uh, it affects about the last six pits more than everyone else down the line. There's Dixon as they pushed him away, and to De Jill DeFerrin came right around him. Still, full course caution. We'll be back. Sullivan. He's having a very good day. Know why? Mike's finally got health insurance. Like many small businesses, Mike's shop couldn't afford insurance before. But now there's Healthy New York. It helps small business owners afford quality health insurance for themselves, their employees, and their families. So now Mike's covered. And not a moment too soon. To find out if you qualify, call 1-866-HEALTHY-NY. On a research assignment. Ten pages on a historical innovator. Well, who'd you pick? Get experience, the man. The results of his work. Who'd you pick? See, the problem with your basic historical innovator is, well, most of them are historical. Sam, and... who'd you pick? Walt Disney. Come share the excitement at our year-long celebration of Walt Disney's 100th birthday. We need to experience Walt's vision on Space Mountain. Again? Make plans at DisneyWorld.com. It's research. Welcome back to the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey. Under caution once again, 32 laps are left in the run. Fernandez has not yet stopped, so that's why he's up there at the top of the order. But there was another situation on that final stop. Elio Castroneves coming out, and here comes Paul Tracy. Now watch when they get under the bridge to the top of the hill. Bingo! Oh yeah, a little 
little help there. Gary Gerald? One of the card officials has just come and told Sim, Tim Sindrick, and we overheard the conversation briefly, that one of the other teams is reporting that there's a bent rear wishbone on Castro Nevis' car. And Tim said rear, and that was confirmed. He's on the radio with Castro Nevis. I don't know if they've been able to assess any damage or if Elio can, in fact, assess any damage, particularly if it's behind him. That would be virtually impossible. Right now, they're keeping them on course, and I think the idea is to just try to see what happens as they come off turn 11 and up the front straightaway. Well, Green is out. He got a brief glimpse, not enough to tell anything. Fernandez leads them down to the hairpin. Pappas in second behind him, then Gidley, and then Jill DeFerrin. With that contact on pit out, Paul Tracy. Oh, look at Damata. Yeah, baby, moving alongside Franchini. Okay, I'll just hold that previous thought for a moment while we look at this one. Chris, are you okay? Cristiano came down the inside okay, with a little bit more speed, washed out wide. Franchitti held the line back to the inside to get off the corner quicker. Stay they the car, had contact. No gets to you. And full course caution again. So watch as they come down. Cristiano Damata down the inside. Franchitti says, ooh, you're in way too fast, way too hot. I'll take the inside line back towards the apex. Cristiano then turns back in for the corner. They make contact. Watch here on your screen. Franchitti back towards the apex. He's got the corner. Cristiano Damata trying to look for some racing room around the outside. They make contact. Cristiano's day is done. We have just broken. We've shattered the record for yellows. It was four. We now have six. Fernandez is the leader. He last pitted on lap 36. Obviously, Cristiano Damata is okay. But it brings out a full course caution and again creates the possibility of a timed race rather than going the distance. You thought we only made cars. We have got to cut cost, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com, save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com, we save 10% on online express shipping. That's oh, that's that's that is wonderful. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. You could say racing is our life, but uh, when you really get down to it, safety is our life. Literally, one of the more important pieces of safety equipment is the tires. So it's really important to take great care of your tires. To inflate and rotate, to keep them performing safely. That's why Firesters put together a free brochure on proper tire maintenance. Because safety is always the most important thing. No matter what you're driving. Tony Kornheiser, Michael Wilbon. We're fat, we're bald, we're old, we're white. And one of us is blind. Pardon the interruption. 5.30 p.m. Eastern, weekdays on ESPN. Special preview Wednesday at 7.30. It's not pretty. PTI. A look down from the Honda Helicam. Still under full chorus caution. Beautiful day, though a very hot day. The sky almost completely clear here in land from the Monterey Peninsula. RPM tonight, 9.30 Eastern Time. All of the racing news of the day. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Paul Page, Parker Johnstone, Gary Gerald, Jan Bikas with you. We're looking at the back end of Elio Castro Nevis's car to see if, in fact, anything is bent. One of the other teams reported that it might be. They have been talking with Elio Castro Nevis on the radio. He's trying to feel the car out. Well, I'm looking for don't see I anything. But as I was going to say on that contact, Paul Tracy. Paul Tracy, a man of few but very colorful words, expressed his displeasure. I'm glad we didn't patch into his radio exactly at that moment. He obviously had Cash Nevis beat coming out of the pits. Paul came back in for an exam of his car, rolled down the pits, and then did a burnout in the Penske Cash Nevis box just to once again express his displeasure. 
Adrian Fernandez, Max Pappas, and Mamo Gidley, we all assume running first, second, and third, will have to stop giving DeFerrin the lead. Is it 5 sixteenths or 9 30 seconds? Does it take a standard socket or metric? What you need is the Gator Grip, the amazing socket that works on over 1,000 nuts, bolts, and fasteners. Watch, no matter what size fastener, nut, bolt, wing nut, square nut, eye bolt, hook, most anything, Gator Grip holds on tight to finish the job quickly and easily. Now hang a plant, work under the hood, fix a motorcycle, even set up a Christmas tree stand. Gator Grip replaces a complete toolbox and fits in your pocket, motorcycle, on your belt, or bike. The secret are these retractable steel rods that form to fit most any size or shape. Then locked in place, just turn and tighten. Look, this man is using a regular socket set. He has to change with every bolt. But this man is using the Gator Grip. There's no fumbling, no searching, no changing. He's done. Gator Grip is strong enough to handle up to 150 foot-pounds of torque. So breaking free a rusted nut is no problem. It can remove recessed, odd-shaped, even damaged and stripped nuts and bolts. Amazing. Ow, that's a pain in your hands. But with the Gator Grip, it's a breeze. Why spend hundreds on all these tools? All you need is the Gator Grip that fits over 1,000 nuts, bolts, and fasteners for only $19.95. But it gets better. You'll also receive this high-speed adapter that connects Gator Grip to your power drills and drivers. Drive in metal bolts with ease. Quickly install protective shutters or put together a bicycle super fast. Yours free. Call right now and we'll include this heavy duty ratcheting handle. Keep one in the kitchen drawer for repairing a sink or turning a broken water spigot. Together, it's all you need. Yours free. Gator Grip comes with a lifetime replacement warranty. If it ever breaks or fails, we'll replace it free for life. Call 1-800-652-6006 to order your Gator Grip for just $19.95 or send check or money order to this address. This incredible offer won't last, so call 1-800-652-6006. Back at the... We're watching... We're, we're back at the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey, and we're watching the right front suspension now of Elio Castroneves because, Parker, that's where you're pretty sure it's bent. The trailing edge of that upper A-arm, you can see it there, has been deflected upwards. That's going to change the camber, the toe a little bit. And the problem with damage with this is that it will stay this way for a number of laps, and then with appropriate load, it can fail instantaneously. This track is mostly to the left, the high load corners, and having that right front suspension damage could be a problem. So given all that, Gary, what are they thinking in this pit? Well, they have confirmed, in fact, that is a concern, and Elio has reported that the car is just a little different in the way it steers, but the big concern, just moments ago, he radioed in and said, I hurt my hand. He says it's hurting. We don't know which hand. We don't know. Apparently, it was when he wanged wheels there. There, and you know how the wheels snap sometimes he was hanging on so he's in some discomfort green flag comes out 57th lap 27 laps left to go 32 minutes left to go if they stay at a racing pace they will run the scheduled distance the steering loading here is so high as you watch Elio lock the left front wheel that any sort of discomfort in your hands wrist or forearms makes it very, very difficult to concentrate on the job of driving. Alex Tagliani, another driver suffering from tendon problems with his right wrist, and coming to this event in this heat, in this sort of physical loading, makes for a very long day at the office. We're keeping an eye on Elio Castroneves, but let's go to the pits and Jan Beekes. Just a further update on Castro Neves. Remember we said that when that yellow came out, everyone was then on the same strategy. Well, remember that Castro Neves had initially pitted on lap 17, therefore that meant he had to take on more fuel. That's why he dropped back in the order. Now, in the meantime, Cristiano D'Amata has returned to the pits. Cristiano, tell us about what happened down there in turn number two. Uh, I just tried to pass Dario on the inside. I slid a little bit on the outside. He was able to come back on the inside and we made contact. Uh, just normal racing thing. Uh, I was trying hard to pass him. I was trying hard not to let me by, so it just happens. It was a very bad angle that you hit the tires. Are you okay? Sorry? You hit the angle, the tire, the, the way you hit the tires was very, a bad angle. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, it, was, uh, it wasn't going very fast, and the tire wall there is pretty good. I was wearing my hands device and everything. It was no, no problem. All right, thank you, Christian. He says not very fast. You're still going about 60. I don't think I want to hit anything head-on at 60. 
And huge improvements this year once again at Laguna Seca Raceway in terms of safety. Lots of new fencing around the inside and outside of the circuit and all new tires in those crash zones. 45 to 50,000 new tires in place makes a big difference to soften the impact when a driver goes in. And including with those improvements, they got a sponsor for it. The Mazda Raceway at Laguna Seca is now its title. Just for the top cars, Max Pappas, who is currently second, he last pitted on lap 43. Fernandez, the leader, last pitted on 36. And Mamo Gidley, currently third, last pitted on 37. How about that, Gidley? We've seen it now two races in a row where he started towards the back and has ended up in a podium position. Nemo Gidley attending his first race with his dad here back in 1991, then later went to work with the Russell Driving School here as a mechanic, and now, 10 years later, in a podium position at Laguna Seca Raceway. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Paul, just a quick follow-up. You heard DeMata talking about the Hans device and it helping him. Hans, H-A-N-S, head and neck support. We've heard so much about it this year. The proliferation of these devices is amazing. We were talking with Bob Hubbard here at the track this weekend, who's been one of the men behind it. He said in the first 10 years of the Hans device, they sold 200 of them. This year, 1,600 of those devices have been sold. Well, and, and he told me, Gary, that more, more than that, they're trying to keep bringing the price down because it being a safety device, they're hoping to get it all throughout the racing community, and that volume helps them reduce the price on the Hans device. Fernandez, Pappas, Gidley. Anticipate that they will all stop. And that will turn the race back into the hands of Jill DeFerrin, followed by Scott Dixon. But sixth place is currently Jimmy Vassar. So maybe Jimmy Vassar will be moving eventually to third, assuming, of course, that all this happens. And that depends a lot on full course cautions, which we have had a record six thus far. We'll be back. The Accord V6 from Honda, designed to give the driver total control. At least that was the original idea. We've got TP on the wingtips. Only Nextel digital cellular phones have direct connect. Static clang coming at you 12 o'clock. A digital two-way radio feature for instant contact. Code red, there's snow on the mouse. I repeat, snow on the mountain. Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. So you can solve problems with the push of a button. Gentlemen, glad to meet you. At least the ones you're aware of. Nextel Direct Connect, the digital two-way radio feature that lets you get right through. We have got to cut cost, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com to save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com, we save 10% on online express shipping. That's wonderful. Wonderful. That is wonderful. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. Mm -hmm. Makes all the difference. Bingo. That's good. Right on the nose. Yeah, that's really it's good. Good. Yeah. Real sad. Mm -hmm. In this time of need, the American Red Cross is profoundly grateful for your generous outpouring of support. The long period of uncertainty and recovery awaits us all. Thanks to your contributions, the American Red Cross is providing life-saving assistance, including food, shelter, grief counseling, and precious blood. We still need your help. Please call 1-800-HELP-NOW to offer your financial support. Thank you. Together, we can save a life. That's Paul Tracy, who just slid off the course. Now, look here, because moments ago, his teammate, Dario Franchitti, slid off in exactly the same place. And so that brings the leader, Adrian Fernandez, in, Gary. We're watching from the near side of the wall, of course, as the team goes to work. No move toward the front wings just yet. Waiting for feeling. No arrow changes. We saw Fernandez is back out in the pack. The advantage for Fernandez, though they're still pretty fast on the pit straight, is we are under full course caution for those two cars, both the uh, dual team green cars being off. And they're off just ahead of where the field is right now. Now, you saw Tracy climb out. Here's what happened to Dario Franchitti. And it both hit right in the same place of the circuit. In fact, uh, just down from our booth. 
Now, take a look here. This is Christian going at it with Dario. Coming into turn two, they bump wheels. And then coming into turn three, 140 mile an hour on the entry, gets the brakes locked up, whatever comes off them. Guess what? The car's not going to turn. It's tractor pull, Laguna Seca 2001 coming up as his teammate decides for the photo op of a lifetime down in turn three. So Max Pappas, one of those drivers we talked about who is uh, trying to impress everybody so he has a ride somewhere next year, is the leader of the race with a Ford. Hi, I'd like to start getting home delivery of the Sunday New York Times. Now you can enjoy Sunday even more by getting the New York Times delivered to your home every weekend. And when you call now, you'll get 50% off the regular home delivery price. I enjoy waking up and having the Sunday New York Times waiting for me. I know it'll tell me things that I won't hear, read, or see anywhere else. I get international and cultural news, and I get a jump on the week ahead. Call now to order, and you'll get the book review, travel, arts and leisure, week in review, and the New York Times Magazine. On Sunday mornings, we catch up on what we really love. She goes straight for arts and leisure. I check out the magazine. So call now to enjoy the Sunday New York Times for eight weeks with home delivery at 50% off. Hi. I'd like to start getting the Sunday New York Times at home. I think the only thing I enjoy more than doing the crossword puzzle is actually finishing it. Call now, 1-800-453-3220, and get the Sunday New York Times delivered to your home every weekend. For me, Sunday was made for the New York Times. I drive a 900-horsepower champ car for a living, and it's a pure adrenaline rush. Before they start the engine, I have to be securely buckled in. Whether you drive one of these, or one of these, always use your seat belts. Make sure that your passengers do too. Knowing that you and your family are safe is the greatest adrenaline rush in the world. Tonight, it's offense versus offense. Indy's top trio, led by Peyton Manning, battles Oakland's Rich Gannon, and Jerry Rice. Oh, and for the touchdown! Raiders, Colts, 8.30 tonight on ESPN. Don't forget, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, Monday night, night countdown comes your way. Now take a look at everything going on. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Well, we're trying to figure a lot of stuff here all at the same time. Uh, probably about 23 minutes left in the actual timed running of the race. 21 laps left. And Max Pappas is in front now with Adrian Fernandez's stop. And Jan Bikas, what are his chances of staying there? Well, according to the team, they are going to try and make it to the end. I spoke with Mark Johnson, who, of course, is on the radio to Max Pappas. He says it's just like Portland. We do not know for sure if we're going to make it, but we are going to try. And if I remember correctly, Portland was the last time we saw Max Pappas in Victory Circle. Now, that was a very wet day. This one is totally dry and hot. Forget that Brian Herta won for Ray Hall here twice, and Bobby Ray Hall's the winning this guy at Laguna Seca. So there's at least some uh, some legend behind all of this possibility. It's going to come down in part to how long this full course caution is, whether or not we go to a timed race or a distance race. <laughs> One way or the other, it will be fun. Every so often, a song comes along that captures the first blush of romance. Now you can capture that feeling with Rock and Pop Classics, two deluxe albums featuring the greatest romantic hits of all time. Each CD comes in a beautiful 32-page hardcover book with photos and stories about the songs and artists. Sometimes the snow comes down in June. two rock and pop CDs and books for only $17.99. It happens all the time, this crazy love of mine. I get lost in your eyes. Then you'll have the opportunity to audition other deluxe albums. There's no obligation to buy and your satisfaction is guaranteed. There's never been an easier way to enjoy the greatest love songs of rock and pop music.
can have the ultimate romantic collection through this special introductory offer. 28 rock and pop hits on two CDs plus two hardcover books for only $17.99. Here's how to order. Call this toll-free number now for rock and pop classics. You'll get two CDs in beautiful hardcover books for only $17.99 plus $3.99 for shipping and handling. Have your credit card ready and call now. Just gone green at the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey. Max Pappas, the leader, with the interesting instruction, lean it back but use the power button. In second place, Mamo Gidley. Jill DeFerrin is third. Michael Andretti is between Gidley and DeFerrin, but he is running 16th. Closing laps, 19 left to go. 19 minutes and 45 seconds left to go. All of that figures in to a victory, potentially, for Max Pappas. That is, of course, assuming that the fuel load is exactly what they think it is. And you know what? I've calculated this so many different times today, and every time, yellow flags have conspired to make sure that I've got it wrong. But we think Max Pappas can make it to the checkered flag. Mark Johnson calling the race for Max from for Team Ray Hall. Said, Max, you're in control. It's your race. Lean it back, as you said, then use the button. That means every time that he hits the button full throttle, he's got full mixture, full ignition advance, full horsepower. As soon as he comes off the throttle, it reverts. Nemo Gibley, though, not letting Max get away. And consider, too, look right Good there. Job, Five job. pit stops for Max Packard. That's a calculation. 20 are left in the tank, 18 are left to go in the race. Consider motivation. Pappas, Gidley, neither one with an apparent ride next year. If, oh. oh! Looks like Oriel Servia. Watch carefully. We don't see any movement yet. And Mauricio Guzman also involved off the edge of the course. Moving his head appears to be okay. touch of tires there's one thing in open wheel racing that you don't want to get involved in and of course the full course caution is out the field slows so with the simple green safety team right there we're just under 18 minutes now this obviously the report from the course is that Oriel Servia is in fact moving in the cockpit Coming down into the second corner, you can see Oriel get up and over the back of Mauricio Guzman's car. Watch, watch it again. Watch, watch. Fortunately, he landed right side up. As you said, Paul, the great danger of open wheel racing is wheel to wheel contact. Car digs in. One of the pieces Serious that, that you see bouncing is actually the brace, the horseshoe that fits around the driver's helmet to help keep, keep the head of the driver steady and in place. You'll see it here flip out to the left. You may also have noticed that SCCA corner workers on that station going into the corner had the flag out even while it was happening. They were waving yellow. And our kudos, of course, as always, to the corner workers from SCCA and from CART volunteers who work in this hot sun for no pay and taking a lot of time off work. Mauricio Guzman walks away from his car. He's obviously okay, or at least nothing that keeps him from walking over to the safety truck. They still work at Oriel Servia's car. I want to go to Adrian Fernandez's onboard camera. He's back in 10th position. Oh. Dry the car is 1,550 pounds. Look at that gouge that the car took out of the... Uh, it is admittedly some loose dirt there, but still that major impact. Working with a very likable Aurea Serbia on the safety team all over that car. And remember, too, at this point, there is, from their point of view, no hurry. You take it as slowly as necessary to get him out safely. It's here, waiting for you. Inside is unlimited strength and power. 
It builds confidence and reshapes your body. It can change everything. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance, all in the convenience of your own home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Bowflex is real. The results are real. The question is, are you ready for Bowflex? For a free video and brochure, call or go online at bowflexdirect.com. Do the research, listen to real customers, then place your order online and get started. Bowflex. Who said change isn't easy? Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call now, 800-553-4400. That's 800-553-4400 for the Wall Street Journal. La NFL Dominical por ESPN, 7 y 30 pm, hora del este, en ESPN Deportes. Today's coverage of the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey has been brought to you by Honda, proud sponsor of the 2001 FedEx Championship Series, and by FedEx, proud sponsor of the FedEx Championship Series. Well, as you can see, they've just taken Oriol Servia out of the car, and uh, they'll place him on the stretcher behind the car, all of the safety team there working with him. We were trying to figure it out, and our best guess is that the car traveled in the air about 55 feet from first impact, this impact, uh, until it caught the ground again. Once again, the greatest safety advancement of recent times, the Hans device, you could see how violent the forward lurching was of Oriole's head but it was arrested by the Hans device as it went up and over and they have done a great deal of work too with the nose of the car multiple bulkheads and decompressible structure to to also primarily to handle impact with the wall but I assume it would help here now a few moments ago Gary Gerald caught up with Paul Tracy and uh, let's listen to that Gary <laughs> Such a disappointing season. Tell us what happened to you when you went off course. Really, uh, I had a bent suspension from uh, from when uh, Castro Neves turned me around in the pit lane. And what's more upsetting about that is how Chris Neifel runs the series. I mean, this series would be better off if they had a circus clown as a crew, as a chief steward, because the job he does is a joke. Paul, well, these are very, very strong words. What prompts this now? Well, you know, you turn somebody around in the pit lane, you should get a penalty for it. Castro Neves is still out on the track, no penalty administered. So I got a bent, bent up car, and I'm out of the race when I had a podium finishing car. Thank you. Well, you're going to love this, Oriol Servia. Just gave a thumbs up. And you can see, obviously, he's moving around. He's conscious. Uh, one would assume alert. This was uh, just a couple of seconds ago to let his fans around the track and everyone know I'm okay. That is some terrific news. What may not be as good a news for Paul Tracy is, uh, look at the CART rule book, rule 1.7.1. Conduct detrimental to the corporation. Chairman of the Board of President is empowered to impose a fine of up to $200,000, $250,000. Or impose suspension on any participant or team that's found guilty of conduct detrimental to the corporation. And criticizing the officials might be deemed exactly to be that. But Paul Tracy is angry. We have heard other comments, though not nearly uh, that vitriolic. Watch this. Now watch the lurch right here as he goes up and over. Tremendous amount of forward force. The Hans device, I think, Paul, as we've seen earlier this year in the incidents of Mauricio Guzman at Texas, of Roberto Moreno, I think the Hans device, once again, has really limited or eliminated injuries to our drivers. It's just a tremendous safety device. Now watch here as the car goes up and over, catches the back of Mauricio's car, and as the car digs in, watch Oriole's helmet right there start to go forward. Now, in the past, we've heard of drivers without the Hans device actually damaging their hands as their helmets have contacted their hands on the steering wheel. The Hans device will limit that neck movement, keeping the shoulders and the head in place. 
and even with this spectacular up and over as he comes down, as you said earlier, Paul, the horseshoe collar that we saw is simply the protective device around the driver's head, does not exit the car until the car has just come to rest on the ground. The Hans device being secured by the shoulder straps around the driver's shoulders. So that is still very much in place. So we'll wait for the official word on the uh, condition of Oreo Servia, but uh, visually we had some great news there as they tow the car away. The ambulance heads on to the medical center. We're going, I think without question, to see a timed race. At 10, well now 9 minutes 55 seconds left to go on our unofficial clock. 14 laps left to go. Max Pappas is out in front. They have just notified it is officially a timed race. That works right into the hands of Pappas and Gidley. They've played all the different possibilities, and it's worked out for them. One of the owners told me that in this day and age, he figures 30% driver, chassis setup, engineering, wind tunnel work. The other 70%, it's how you catch the brakes and the yellows. Earlier in this race, we saw Tim Sidrick call what I thought was a perfect race. Then Roger Pansky comes back. It turns out he had the right decisions, and now we see Ray Hall and Chip Ganassi with the yellows we've had. Well, their decisions were correct the way the yellows have played out. So do we know the story with Pappas, Jan? What about Gidley? Well, for Gidley, he may have been in some trouble, but now with this long yellow, it does appear as though Mimo Gidley, now with a timed race, should also be able to make it to the end without a splash and go. And what a change of events for Max Pappas. The highs of qualifying on the pole and driving a perfect race at Portland, having contact while in contention for the lead with his teammate at Michigan. And today, we were joking a little earlier, he's gone from Mad Max to Bad Max to Sad Max. And I'm hoping, Paul, once again, we'll see Glad Max uh, when the checkered flag comes out. Uh, the point is... And what this six. does... Fuel position six. You're going to use the butt. And... Uh the wheels off the car, buddy. Counting down on the clock now. What this does do for the championship is uh, it helps Breck just a little bit by Jill DeFerrin getting pumped back in third place here. Don't forget the Grand Prix of Australia, the next race in the series from down under, and coverage on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. This has been a most amazing day here at Laguna Seca. A uh, record number of yellows and a number of incidents that have been absolutely fascinating while we're waiting for them to go green. I'll take you back and just look at some of them. And surprisingly enough, with those eight yellows for right now at 34 laps, we have had no reports of a serious injury, and uh, we're making an assumption there that Oriol Servia is in fact okay, and we're waiting for the official word on him. Max Papp is standing on the gas, trying to get the jump on Gidley, trying to time this breakdown to the pace car. Now he slows down again. Just trying to get some heat into the tires. Try to get Gidley and the rest of the field out of rhythm here. He'll slow down, accelerate, slow down. We see him scrub tires. Just trying to get everybody distracted. At this point, it's a mind game. That's all it is. He wants that. Mark Johnson coaching Max Pappas. But all Max is doing here is letting that pace car get out as far as possible and now accelerate, decelerate, get everybody out of rhythm. Here's the official word, Oriol Servia, awake, alert, complaining of pain in the neck, but otherwise is okay. That coming from the cart itself. Here we go, down Max. the hill. Max, go now. <laughs> yeah, but everybody's gonna go now. That's the thing, everyone knows this game. Michael Andretti sitting physically third, but actually 14th, one lap behind the race. DeFerrin now, with that championship at hand, is just trying to make sure he doesn't get caught up in any restart lap antics here. Trying to make sure he's got space to Michael, space back to Dixon. Yeah, but there's no space back to Dixon. Well, he's just trying to get some, some room here. We see a tear-off go up in the air, nothing there. 
As the drivers know, of course, we keep saying this, that this will probably be the last restart with just over five minutes now before the checkered rose. Gidley chases Max up the hill. He lost a little bit to Max in turn two. Whoa! Why don't you run right onto the grass, Scott? That was great. Dixon looking for a move, got out of turn six, better than DeFerrin, trying to use that advantage on the exit to try to make a move up that short straightaway, up over the top of the hill. Five minutes to go. DeFerrin's got to make a decision here. If Scott gets another run like that, you've got to be very careful. Do you fight for that position with possible contact, or do you just let him by? at Laguna Seca. Max, seven-tenths of a second ahead of Gidley. Max is doing a very nice job. Very nice job. Watching the Pappas lead from the pits, Jan Vigas. Something just occurred to me is that what if you were Kenny Breck? Kenny Breck, who was thinking he needed to score a victory here today, thinking he and his teammate Max Pappas couldn't find the setup of the car. Now you sit on the pit wall with your car damaged, thinking, if only I could have kept all the wheels on the car. Kenny Breck out in an incident in the opening laps. Scored for 25th with no points. Max Pappas with nowhere to go next year, at least based on current announcements. Looking to score a victory and secure a ride, if not at Ray Hall, somewhere next season. In the second of this year, third of his career. Max always wears his heart on his sleeve. He's now a second ahead of Gidley. Pulled out three tenths on that lap. Such a great personality in this series. And I would imagine that if Max continues to pull out this lead and win this race, we will see a very tearful, jubilant Max Pappas. He's always one that you, uh, the, the media always knows, you need a quote, you need a quick, go to Max Pappas. And he's going to give you not only a colorful quote, but a thoughtful one. Now three minutes left. And then there's this driver, Nemo Gidley, as we've said, also looking for a ride next year. He's had such up and down weekends where he's qualified at the front and then been unable to convert, and he's at the back. Like Houston last week, but works his way back onto the podium. Such a roller coaster season, both of these drivers in first and second. Assuming it stays green, the assumption be about five and a half laps to go now. Max Pappas, he knows he's got the interval that he needs. He's not worried about coming from a direct attack. He pulls out another tenth of a second on that lap. He just wants to stay focused, stay in rhythm, wants to push hard to make sure that he remains in full focus during these last few laps. Forget that five and a half. <laughs> We're down to the final two minutes. Max Pappas may have his dream come true here very quickly, but keep an eye on Gidley. He's been studying Pappas constantly now. And you concentrate on the corner exits, Paul, like here out of turn six. We're going to see the white flag this time by. One lap to go for Pappas and Gidley. Let's go down to Jan. Quickly, with Dr. Olvi, what is the condition of Oreo Serbia? Well, I'm happy to report that Oreo is uh, really good. He's awake, alert, talking. He's got some pain in the back of his neck. We're sending him into the hospital for some x-rays. He could have a neck injury, but moving everything looks good. That's great news. Thank you. White flag flies for Max Pappas. Gidley climbs the hill with him. Now, what can Gidley do? He lost a tenth of a second on that lap, but as I was saying, when you're in this position, you might give up just a little bit under braking, maybe a little bit in cornering speed to absolutely ensure that the exit of the corners every single time are absolutely perfect. You want to make sure that you don't fall under attack, under braking at the end of these short straightaways. So Max Pappas now making sure every exit is absolutely as perfect as possible. 
Now, the most difficult corner on the circuit, turn number six coming up. It's blind on entry. This is where Herta made a small mistake a few years ago, allowing Alexandro Zanardi to get that great run up and complete the pass. And Max does it absolutely perfectly. Now, just down the hill, a few more upshifts, a left, right, left combination, and Max Pappas will have victory number three in the kart series. Max Pappas. Boy, did they play the strategy dead perfect today. Of course, the numerous yellows figured into it. Final turn. That's a queen version I never heard. <laughs> and he blows the stats all the heck, Paul. No one's ever started this race farther than from six and one. Max Pappas coming from the 24th starting position. And a, a good day for both Max and for Mamo Gidley, who finishes second. He needed a result like that. Max wants to show off now. If he takes too much time showing off, we're going to run out of time. And I know, Paul, but I love the donuts. This, this is a message to his buddy, Alex Zanardi, all of, our, all of our heroes. He's saying, Alex, this one's for you. Now, Max Papp is now savoring the moment. Unfortunately, it uh, looks like we may run out of time before Max Pappas gets around to the winner circle. The good news is it's a little bit up the hill. Maybe if uh, he turns another one of those record laps, we can actually do that, but it's doubtful. Unofficially, it's Pappas, Gidley. The Farron leads the most laps and takes the point for the pole, but finishes third. The championship battle goes on to Australia. Look down the entire unofficial order. Here are the point standings as Kenny Breck falls from 11th to now 26 points behind Jill DeFerrin in the championship, but he's not out of it yet. He himself pointed that out. Though it's going to be far more difficult for Kenny Breck here today. The Honda Grand Prix of Monterey has made for a most interesting afternoon. We've seen a lot of races at this track. I don't think we've ever seen one here that ended up quite that way. Two weeks, the Grand Prix of Australia. We'll have coverage on ESPN. Another special moment, too. This is the 100th victory for Firestone. And Max Pappas wheels the car in. First pull was actually run by my friend Parker Johnstone for Firestone. So this puts the bookends on that history. Congratulations to Max Pappas. Championship goes on. Parker Johnstone, Gary Gerald, Jan Vikas did the uh, coverage down on the pit. Parker up here in the booth, the very happy Bobby Ray Hall. This has been a presentation of the ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.